Hello everyone and welcome back to Critique Clinic, the video series where we give our patrons critique and advice on how they and hopefully you can improve your miniatures. Yeah, unfortunately I wasn't on the last episode so apologies for that but I'm back and eager to have a look at what you've been painting. Okay, first up Tyke86 says one of my most recent minis, Azrak, trying to up my NMM credibility and thought what better way to work on it than by painting a thousand miles of trim. Uh, appreciate any and all critique and areas I can improve. Well, you chose a model which uh, definitely will be pushing you outside your comfort zone for improving your non-metallics. Uh, this guy, as you said, has a thousand miles of trim. So there's, you've done a really good job overall looking at the sort of colours and tones. I've got to say that to start off with. Um, and I really like, in an opinionated statement, uh, the, the contrast value between the actual red of the armour and the gold. I think having the gold really bright and the armour darker just really makes the trim stand out. Um, immediately from the get-go, one of the things that I think that I wanted to just talk about is, is like just the smoothness of the transitions. I think NMM can be done in all different ways. And I think that you can have non-metallics that have really rough kind of like sketches of the color and it works really well also. But I think something that I would probably say in an opinionated statement would be to just to smooth it a little bit. You can have more stark marks for the real glimmer and shine points and secondary highlights and things. But I think just in general, one of the things that this is is, is kind of demonstrating for me is that there's a little bit of, of patchiness and roughness with regards to the like sort of like the transitions between certain tones of it of the uh, of the trim. I think part of where that's coming from potentially is like the jump between the mid tone and the brightest yeah. highlight is quite big and I'm not seeing like anything kind of in between to break it up. Mm -hmm. So you've gone really, really nice and dark with the sort of darker shadows and then really really nice and bright with the brightest highlights which is great because there's loads of contrast but i think the sort of mid tones is where it's getting a little bit lost so like just the difference between here and here is a massive jump in color value but there's sort of i would have gone for like a brighter yellow or something just to smooth this transition out yeah definitely i think because because it's a lot softer between sort of like the dark and the mid um there you can see obviously the, the difference between really the smooth blends between the dark shadows and the mid tone it, yeah, yeah. lighter lighter tones are harder to get smooth definitely but i just think you need to spend a bit more time just glazing it just to soften it down slightly um one of the things as well that i probably probably would say is that like with regards to the shape uh, as well the, the shoulder pad is a bit like a cylinder. So what, what I would definitely recommend is where you've done the highlight here, you, you can kind of see here that there's like a bit of patchiness to that to that sort of bloom or to that catch point of light. If you're going to do it, I would do the whole uh, the whole width of it. So then that way it's consistent across the whole thing because it doesn't really read that light is, it looks almost like that where that light's catching, there's like some damage or something or the, the metal is like bowed or something because that's why there'd be like a little bit of a shadow. So I definitely make sure that, that when you do the transition and when you're putting your sketching on your, your lights, I definitely would make sure that they're solid in the sense of the, the shape as well, because in that way, it just helps with the readability of the actual curve of the armor. And just moving on from that as well, um, one thing I think in terms of like more like big picture stuff, like the overall composition, I'm not 100% sure if skulls was necessarily the right choice in terms of, I think there's, because you've got this like very similar sort of yellowish tone in the, the bone uh, and in the gold trim. I think maybe there's just a little bit of contrast that opportunity was missed perhaps. Like I see that you've done some like, I think it looks like some like pigment effects to sort of add some like dirt and dust over the skulls, which I think is really, really cool. And like, you've obviously got the contrast in terms of like this being a shiny surface and this being like a dull bone surface. Um, for me, I think maybe potentially there was just an opportunity to do something a bit different with colour choice there, just yeah. to make the model stand out a little bit more. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, I understand totally why you've done skulls. Obviously, it's a cool model. I get that totally. Um, I, I think you're quite right, George. And I think one of the things that I personally would probably recommend is maybe like bone can be all different tones, like age, environment, setting. They they really do affect the way that bone, um, it, the bone actually sort of tones and, and colours. I think one thing to be conscious of potentially is if you'd been maybe, as you quite rightly said, George, the colours and tones in the non-metallics, the, the catch points or the higher higher the lights on the on the metallics they've got a very similar sort of uh contrast value to, to the rest of the model or to the saturation of that color so I, I probably would have gone for more of a grayer tone on the bone um, and what that could have potentially done for you is actually just just separate the bone a bit more from the colors that are used on the trim um but that's yeah that's probably what i would have done with the base one of the things that i noticed when i had a look at the uh the sort of like the silvers on the uh, on the piece uh if you look at the gun barrel here or the side of the, of the right or the gun you've done a really good volumetric based linear highlight here which is nice and um, something to be conscious of is potentially you could do uh, a secondary highlight here potentially just a softer a sort of secondary highlight just here potentially depending on where your light source is coming from but with your volumetric uh sort of highlight here along the apex of the curve of that cylinder what i probably would have done is made it a little bit more sharper just so it really really shows the curve it like it looks a little bit soft for me um yeah i just probably would just sharpen that a little bit the other thing i'd say is that the other metallics that are on here so i'm, I'm gonna i'm reading this as metallic because there's a bit of rust here for example you've like sketched on some oranges rust um i think the grenades 
uh, definitely need to be more refined and cleaner. You can see there's some spill here that's just gone into the recess of that kind of like grip part of the grenade. Uh, and it kind of some of the grip parts here on this grenade just seem to be lost a little bit. Um, but I would say definitely that also with your with your saturation of colors and your bright point, it doesn't really make sense to me that the metallics are this bright and shimmering from wherever light is coming from. And then the corn symbol, the, the the silver skulls here. You've got so you've got like a really bright point here, but then on the grenades and on the corn symbol, you've not really got any brighter brighter points. They're quite dull by comparison, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's that's something for for me. I, I instantly saw when I looked at the model. I think as well, actually, just going back to what you said on the gun barrel. One thing I've noticed is that you've got that volumetric highlighting along the silver, but it's not actually been followed to sort of the red um sort of weapon casing that's going around as well yeah and then kind of just speaking overall i would actually argue that potentially there's just been a bit less like effort and attention spent on the red compared to the gold um i think that's probably due to the fact that you said you wanted to like practice your non-metallic metals which is fair enough um but i think there could just be like just some additional highlight stages and refinement and just sort of overall effort on on the red armor because i think it looks a little bit less finished than the gold does if that makes sense yeah i think definitely. that's particularly obvious in like areas like this for example i'm not really seeing that much has been done beyond just sort of base cutting this area no definitely and then like you can see like there's like rivets here that just haven't been painted metallic as well like if you're going to be you, you've got you've got that color on the brush so again for efficiency purposes like if you've got those colors doing that 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 metallic put it on the rivets as well it takes literally seconds but it adds so much value to the to the miniature as in readability you can see that it's a rivet you know one thing i did want to just point out a bit that i absolutely love and it really does look read really nicely is actually this 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 gold bobble here i don't know what else to call it <laughs> but this gold bobble here on the kneecap is actually really nice um and i'd say that you've worked the colors and tones in there a lot a lot smoother than in other areas if you look at the comparative trim here for example look how smooth and well blended this is and i'd even say glaze this down a bit more to get it really soft and have the sheen on there quite nice um but this is more what i would be aiming for in the sense of like execution quality just just to really step up the rest of the gold details that's the kind of thing i found with nmm in general is every single tiny little detail and area no matter how insignificant it is to the piece has to be treated with the exact same amount of attention and care and the amount of highlight stages and the amount of glazing it's one of the things that makes i think the technique so difficult especially when it's on so much of a model yeah definitely and the last thing is the uh, osl on the head big fan of, of osl especially when it's not too crazy and, and over the top you've done a great job with this one thing i did notice is that the light will obviously reflect the light's coming from within the, uh, the, the within the suit and obviously it's it's hitting this cowling here but it would also reflect onto the dome or the back of the head so that's just something to be conscious of um that will actually make it read more as osl by you actually placing it there and then having the ref uh, the reflection of the color up there as well yeah i agree i actually think potentially like just in the sort of brightest point like right on the inside i think potentially you could go just a little tiny bit brighter just to show that you know where the light is emanating from in the center yeah like, yeah we we'll say like the center of the light is where it's going to be the brightest and it's going to get softer and more diffused as it goes out 100%. this is just as bright as this is here even though it's further away from the light source so i'd say adding like a really bright like lime green edge highlight just along this sort of plane here it will sell it more. i think it would help to sell the glow effect just a little bit more yeah okay next up rogue 404 says i'm entering this into fen on the weekend so apologies we're a bit late to this yeah, one a little bit late, yeah. uh, i've had some feedback from friends but looking for, for some impartial eyes this will be my first competition piece just looking for some advice on what to work on and how to improve to take it to the next level so this is a really cool piece. Uh, I like the story. I absolutely love the riding the uh, the squig bike, if anything. I think one of the things that for, for a start that I really like is the fact that all the colours are as saturated as each other. You've got a real nice balance between the saturation of the skin on both the orc and also on the squig. Uh, the, even the sign that's obviously on the base as well. I think that's really good. And I think you made a really great choice in doing the sort of desaturated, sort of neutral toned kind of like road as well. I think that's a really, really nice choice. Um, one of the things that I would say about the flesh, in my opinion, is that I think it looks a little bit potentially flat i think you need to do a bit more volumetric with regards to the muscular structure um i think that you could easily add a, a, a more saturation towards higher points so you can actually see in the in the photos that you've taken where light is inherently hitting the muscular structure and creating natural blooms from the lighting that you've lit the piece with so almost that photo is a bit of like a, a sketch or a, a, a template for you to then go in with a brush and then just glaze those brighter saturated colors in those places um, I think for me, that's one of the things that immediately when I first saw it, and that's demonstrated across the squig, plus also the orc, uh, the orc as well. I think equally, you could kind of go the opposite way to that. So I'm noticing a bit of a lack of shading. So you've got all of these like bumps and bits of like uh, sort of protruding skin and all the sort of scars and things like that. But you could like add a lot of refineness just by adding some shading with like just some washes or some contrast paints or some thin down glazes. Um, just around these areas because it will help define them just a little bit more, having some darker shading around them. Because I'm noticing particularly on the underside, where you know the model is in shadow it's still just as bright as areas on the top 
And additionally, like I said, because he's sort of round surfaces, I would expect to see some sort of shading building up underneath and on sort of the muscular structure as well. It's a little bit hard to tell from this photo, actually, what is uh, lighting from the photo and what is lighting from how the miniature has been painted. But I think that like around here, we're seeing an example of how it is actually probably most of it coming from the photography rather than the actual miniature. Yeah. So I think that, you know, just adding a wash or like I said, a contrast paint or some glazes, if you want to do that in some of these like recesses, I think would add a lot of a lot of contrast uh, because it's such a, a big focal point of the piece, isn't it? This big squig. So yeah, um, I think doing that could could push it a lot more potentially as well as doing the highlights. The, the other thing I wanted to comment on something that I noticed as well, that I think that your metallics in general um, are really clean and that's not... It's not like a bad thing, but I think that one of the things that I always talk about is obviously just the, the, the narrative side of it. I always say 40K is very much like historical science fiction scale modeling. Um, Orcs would generally wouldn't look after their gear. So like I really want to add interest onto these metallics by adding maybe some some subtle corrosion or some some scratches with a brighter silver or just, just showing function. You can have like an oil drip or something, or you can have a collection of like a, of oil just running down one of the pipes or something. The other thing I noticed as well is like on this Chevron, pipe you've done a great job of of sectioning it and doing the, the bands on the pipe really nicely and sharply which is great you look at the photo you can see a natural uh a sort of volumetric highlight on that on that um pipe that you can see there that's that's not been painted on from what i can see in the photo i definitely would go on with with like either like a, just a, a bit maybe an ivory or maybe just a bit of a desaturated white uh, and then put like the apex curve volumetric highlight just on that pipe as well um again i can go into more detail on other parts but I, I, the same kind of thought process should be applied overall into the miniature the leather you got some copper here you could put some verdigris there's lots of things that add a lot that you can add a lot of interest to and tell the story and richness which makes someone look at the model for longer uh, finally, just to round this out as well, I think in regards to the basing, I think this is somewhere where you could spend a very, very small amount of effort, but to add a lot of overall value to the piece quite easily. Um, I think some additional dry brushing, particularly around uh, the edges of the sort of cracks here, where you've got the concrete sort of separating. I think if you've done some dry brushing of some like nice light greys around here, it would really, really help refine those like sharp edges. I think as well like on the sand texture, um, adding some like brighter sort of ivory tones and whatever, just to sort of show the grit and the the surface uh, unevenness as well. I think it's a small thing, but it would add a lot of uh, visual interest. And then finally, I think this is something that's easy to overlook, but much like how we say like a nice, clean painted base rim really finalizes a nice base. I think that the plinth looks like a little bit messy to me. I don't know if this is like dust or if it's like patchiness from where it's been painted or something, or maybe it hasn't even been painted. What I would say is just mask off the basing area, get a rattle can and just give this a nice even coat, make it really, really nice and flat and smooth because it's something that I shouldn't be drawing, my eye shouldn't be drawn to this. This should sort of just disappear and just sort of be nothing. But because of the sort of state that it's in, it's a little bit distracting from the piece. I think particularly because it's such a large plinth, it's quite tall. I think that really for me needs to be really, really smooth and clean. So it just sort of disappears and I'm not really thinking about it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the, I, I'm glad you're talking about basing because I did notice something that I really want to wanted to sort of just add a comment on and an opinion on. Um, I, I like the fact you've used sand and I understand the reason why you've used sand, but but it doesn't look like it's been painted. And I think one of the things is it's it's all well and good to put sand on the base if you want to insinuate sand. I get that. But I would still actually paint it and a colour, as in paint it sand like colours. So we're talking ivories, we're talking desaturated yellows, we're talking I would still go in and do that. Um I think that will just add a lot more interest to the base, having different tones on it rather than the natural inherent tones that sand has. Um Again, the beauty of this is that the sand, if you look at the sand color that's on the actual piece, you can see that the tuft that you've chosen, which is a desert style tuft, which is great, it blurs in massively into that into that sand. If you had a slight tonal variance, it'd actually make the tuft stand out more and draw more interest to it. Um, same with the rocks, you could do these different colors, you could do different things to add interest to those things. This is about adding, uh, you, when you've got someone's attention on the piece, specifically for a competition, you really wanna lock in their attention on that and that you do that by adding lots of interesting things on there, like all the things I've mentioned, weathering and all those different things. Same goes for the base as well. You should put as much effort into that as you do on the miniature. Yeah, hundred percent. I think it's something that um, a lot of people shortcut on basing is like, well, it's sand and I want it to be sand. So why would I paint the sand? But it's just the way that the light behaves on it. And when you put a painted miniature on it, it's, it, it becomes obvious. I'm not sure why I'm, I couldn't really get into the science of it, but it's something that's just always been true. Even if you're going to paint it the exact same color that it already is, just the fact that it's got paint on it and it's the same surface finish as everything else. It just ties everything together. It, and especially because you're asking for a judging perspective on it, like as a, you know, if you're judging it, then one thing I would say that someone might look at it and potentially go, oh, they've spent loads of time on the miniature, but they've just put some sand on the base. Whereas if you've actually painted it, 
it will say to that person reading it, I will have spent as much time on that as the miniature, which is really important for the competitions. And finally, Dale says, I just wanted to see how far I could push myself, especially with an iconic Space Wolf. I was genuinely happy with most of the model and I learned a lot, but I seemed to struggle with gold. I've tried lots of different ones, but it's still not there. However, any tips to step it up a level would be great. So I think you've actually done a really good job for uh, approaching Ragnar. It's quite an interesting model, lots of tiny little details and things. And overall, the, the model's really clean. That's something that just came out straight away, like from looking at it. There's a lot of nice little things on there that you've done. It shows good brush control, which I think is really important for, for as a painter. I'm going to start with the thing that you you said you're struggling with the most. I don't think you've done badly at all whatsoever with the gold. I, all I would definitely say is that I think you just need to, to put more contrast onto it and, and sort of like with thin down, maybe you can use inks or you can use glaze, uh, like washes, just make glazes out of them. You can even use like colors like Rhinox Hide, Dryad Bark, and you can make glazes out of those. Shadows on metallics, you want them to be matte uh, to show that light's not hitting them, to kind of like uh, to show that like there's no reflect, to show there's no reflection of light. Um, if we take the wolf's head here, for example, you've you actually added quite a nice amount of, of shading on there, but I think you could do so much more and push it more like these, uh, these facets of the shape, like these overhangs here. So the top of this ear where it overhangs on this shadow here, you can really push these slightly darker just to really, and it almost like sculpts or contours all the shapes that are actually on that, on that, that metallic item. One of the paints that I actually really like for that, I've spoken about on the podcast before is my traditional sort of go-to kind of, uh, graduating from GW sort of painting uh, lessons is uh, typically people would do like a, is it Retributorama mm -hmm. and then a Reichland flesh shade wash. Yeah, yeah. What I like to do is an additional uh, stage of shading is to use a um, Citadel wash called Caraboca Crimson, which is really, really nice for deep, deep recesses. So what I'll be talking about is like in the eye socket, yeah, sort of in the tips of the ears and like in really deep recesses, uh, like you've got in the sort of pommel here. Um, I think uh, that's an easy way to go about it as well. Yeah, definitely. And if you don't want it to be so harsh, what you can do is, and that's exactly that's a perfect way of doing it. Like you said, George, you can literally mix, uh, do a 50-50 of Carisberg Crimson and also I can flesh shade. Or even just water. Like people forget, what, you haven't got to use washes straight out of the pot, just thin them down. Yeah, you yeah. creep up on that shading. You can do it in gradual passes. So you haven't got to, you know, slap wash all over the model and sort of go mad with it. It's just building up those stages gradually. Yeah, it's literally just tinting those, those individual little areas of the gold and you leave the gold inherently the colour that it is, which is which is quite nice. Um, but yeah, overall, I thought you, I thought you, your golds are great. I think it's just literally just the shading. You just need to increase that a bit more in general across the, the details that are on the piece. Uh, one of the things that caught my eye actually is um, just in regards to the leather. Um, I think to me personally, this is probably sort of one of the least, uh, to use a word from earlier, like credible parts of the miniature. To me, this doesn't read as leather, just being entirely honest. Whereas um, all the other surfaces of the model do, like even the gold looks like gold to me. Um, I think just spend some time um, either looking up, you know, on YouTube from tutorials of painting leather, or especially one of my favorite things to do is just sort of go on Google images and just look up um, real life references for leather. There's a whole variety of tones of, of leather, like warm, uh, rich, you know, brown leathers to, you know, dyed leather. Obviously, you can have just like black, you know. I think have a look at some references. Um, I think it's just color choice for me. I think you've got sort of black, but then some sort of muddy browns and then some yellow tones. I think for me, it just kind of doesn't work. Um, I think have a look at some leather recipes, have a look at maybe some just box art photos because you're painting in sort of a box art style anyway. Um, and just have a think about the paints that you could be using and just maybe some more apt color choices just to get those tones reading right. I think the way you painted it is absolutely fine. It's the way that's been highlighted uh, for me, I think it's just a bit color choice. Um, and I'm not sure if you dry brushed this or if it's just like uh, maybe just some patchiness from uh, how you've edge highlighted it. I would say that you've clearly demonstrated you've got the brush control for the edge highlighting by what I can see on the armor and the other areas of the model. So I'd say um, if that is a dry brush, maybe that's a shortcut I wouldn't take personally. And I would look to be just doing nice, clean edge highlights with a brush, which you've demonstrated that you can do. So one of the things that I noticed about the miniature is the face, which I think you've actually done a really nice job on. From having a look at it, you can see there's some nice subtle, uh, subtle sort of like shading on there as well, like the eye socket, the overhang of the brow is nice and shaded. Uh, I like the fact that you've around the hairline, you've also done shading as well to show that that little bit of shadow just around that sort of hairline, which is great. Um, obviously, he's got a scar on his face and I can kind of see it. I think you've added like a bit of a reddish tint there on the yeah, scar as well. Yeah. So I think that's a really good use of colour. It's showing that you're reading and understanding what the face is, the face, the sculpted details on the face are. Um, the eyes look actually really good. So as like I said, it's a it's a little bit um a little bit pixelated the photo, but like at this level when I'm zooming in, but I can see that you've placed white in there and it's obviously got black in there as well, which is good. Um, all I would potentially say is that there's a little bit of a scuff on the nose that you just need to re relayer over. Um, and I would potentially just really, really subtly just push the contrast a little bit more, not to the levels where all the recesses are like super dark, but just again, with those really thin 
diluted down glazes just do a couple of thin layers drying them on in individually with a hair dryer every time you do it just to tint those areas slightly darker i'd actually argue potentially that the shading is fine i think for me it's like the lack of highlights i think that the mid-tone and the brightest yeah. highlight on the skin is actually probably a bit too similar i should think that again it's hard to tell from the photo but i think that looking at this part of the brow and then the deepness of the scar and looking around the hairline as well i think there are actually multiple stages of like nice shading and glazing that's gone on here and it's really nice and smooth yeah, yeah. i think for me it's the lack of like you know, nice bright highlight on the on the prominent parts like the brow, the cheekbones, sort of smile lines, and on the tip of the nose. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you can you can either push you can pushing contrast doesn't necessarily mean like like what I said doing shading. Like Georgia said, you can go the other way and obviously put highlighting on. I think one of the most important things is to really just make all because of twenty eight mil tiny little heads are they've got a lot of detail on them trying to separate each of those little details so they're readable remember what we always say a face is one of the most instantly recognizable things to a human from the moment you're, you're a baby so um it's really important to, to to make those look as best as possible which i think you've done a really good job so a big thank you to everybody who submitted photos for this episode of critique clinic yeah 100 and if you'd like to get your miniatures featured on a future episode then check the link in the description of this video find a link to our Patreon and you can find all the details over there. As well as Critique Clinic, you'll also gain access to over 350 PDF tutorials, which we update every single week. So a massive thank you and we'll see you next time.